Good job getting up here. I guess you learned about grays because of the vlog? Yes, yes because of you. Dad, I love it, I love it. I saw another guy down there. Solid workout, feeling good. Oh man, I'm gonna miss it. It's been a good season up here. And uh, you know, time to freshen up for the US Mountain Championships. We'll take it. We will take it. See you at the studio. And we're back from the mountains. All right, everyone. Solid day up on Gray's Peak. And yes, we're gonna replace the Nike Vaporfly 4% fly knits from yesterday's threshold, put up the Salmine Trail 5s, and talk about two different types of shoes, uh, brand recognition, Salming versus Nike. Kind of, it makes, it makes me a smile when we can run in different uh, companies, different styles of shoes here on this YouTube channel. And again, a shout out to Noah and Todd for saying hello today up on the mountain. Um, okay, here we go. Today's run, 20 miles, and I did not have time to sit down outside the studio and convert the miles to kilometers along with the feet to meters, so there it is on your screen. And the reason I don't have time is because I am catching a flight in the morning, which means I need to pack because we're heading off to New Hampshire, and today's topic focuses on why I'm gonna keep this a little more simple on the editing side of the vlog and simple on as far as how much I talk to you here in the studio so that I can not go foam roll, not go aqua jog in the pool, not go drink a recovery mix, even though I did do that today, uh, but yes, so that I can go to sleep. That's right, that is the number one uh, recovery tool that we have as runners. It's sleep, more sleep, higher quality sleep, and so we're gonna dive into this topic today, and this is just scratching the surface. I think this will be, I bet we make two or three more vlogs in the next year that focus just on this topic for runners, long distance runners especially, who are striving to chase down personal records, chase down uh, faster, <clears throat> maybe actually chase down Boston qualifiers, uh, which I, I heard that the uh, the new qualifying times were just released this past week, and I, it sounds like based on the buzz that it's gotten a little faster. So that is the topic for Today's vlog, sleep, sleep, sleep. And yes, this is a huge topic. I'm not an expert. I've never studied sleep. I, I believe there are people out there who study sleep like full time, that's their job. They actually counsel people to help them sleep better if they're struggling, if they have uh, sleep deprivation in their life. Um, so I'm not an expert, but I will do my best to share my experience with you. And uh, here we go, let's dive in. Basically, you know the rule of thumb, at least seven hours of sleep per night just for normal everyday people that are maybe not long distance runners. Seven hours every single night, no matter what. Um, okay, so that's seven hours. Now, I've heard that for long distance runners, uh, let's say that's training above like 25 to 30 miles per week, that you should get a strive for at least eight hours a night, which I know is difficult. Um, <clears throat> so for me, when I was in college, so in high school, I never trained more than I think I topped out at the most 40 miles per week, at the most. And then when I had this bright idea to walk on to the University of Colorado cross country and track team, uh, which I accomplished 
then my volume started to increase and I started to learn about what it takes to train, <clears throat> excuse me, at a high level. Therefore, I found as a sophomore on the cross country team, when I started talking about 80 to 90 miles per week for my volume of training, that is when I needed, no matter what, eight hours, really eight to nine hours of sleep every single night, 90 miles per week, um, nine to 10 hours per night, and then 100 plus miles per week for my volume, I would need to sleep 10 hours plus for, uh, per night. And that's just how it went down for me at CU. And uh, now, I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna do it now, because, and this is, oh, this is tough, everyone, this is tough. This is uh, us being vulnerable with each other. Question of the day, do you get enough sleep for the level of training that you are currently at? I, am, I do not. I, I do not. No way, no way, no way, no way. I'm being very frank with you. Um, I should be sleeping, I would say, at least nine hours a night at 100 miles. That's where I'm at about right now is 100 miles per week. So I do not hit my own rule of thumb for that nine, at least 10. I probably sleep seven hours a night right now. And I think as a parent, you kind of get used to a little bit of sleep deprivation. So I think I've got that going for me as far as just kind of being used to feeling a little tired, a little off at times, uh, but I wish it wasn't like that. So that's the question of the day. Be honest with us down in the comments. Do you get enough sleep to match your current level of training? So when you are, when you are sleep deprived and you're not sleeping as much, your body struggles uh, metabolizing glucose when you're sleeping. And glucose is what our bodies need for energy. And so if your uh, body is not metabolizing glucose at night, um, you're going to have decreased energy levels, which of course impacts our, um, impacts our training. In fact, today I felt a little tired up there. Now I had a hard workout, but up in the mountain, I, I felt a little tired and I feel like I slept pretty well last night, but maybe not as much as I should have. It was probably a six and a half to seven hour night last night. And sure enough, like I felt, I felt a little Blah, today up on the mountain. And the other benefit for sleeping well, sleeping at the right amount of uh, volume, right amount of hours, and making sure we're getting our REM cycles in, and that ideally our sleep is not interrupted, which I get it, like things happen in life, like sometimes our sleep is interrupted, whether you're too hot or screaming kids or uh, alarms going off in your apartment building, who knows what the case may be. But when we do sleep well, our hormones are better balanced and uh, at, when we're sleeping, uh, testosterone and IGF-1 is released into our bodies. And that helps, of co as many of you know, especially testosterone helps us rebuild our muscles. So after a long run, after a threshold run like yesterday, and then also after like inter hard interval days or maybe a day in the gym, um, if we can sleep more and at higher quality levels, uh, our muscles are going to be rebuilding uh, while we're sleeping. And now I do have a quick observation to make before we wrap this up is that um, when I watch the Kenyans and Ethiopians train, and when I say watch, I mean like through documentaries, a lot of times, and actually no, Ryan Hall talks about this as well, uh, the, mar the former marathon runner here in the United States, he's retired now, uh, they talk about naps. And now they're professional runners. Um, but I just wonder, like, for me personally, and maybe this is like a, an addendum to the question of the day, but for me personally, if I take a nap, I don't sleep that night. Like it's really, really bad. So I purposefully do not nap during the day. And frankly, who has time to nap these days, right? As I, if you have time to nap, like that's amazing, but I do not have time to nap. Um, so I'm just curious to hear your thoughts as well on napping. And like, I, I, watch, I watch these professional runners, like that's their full-time job. And most of them are napping like from like for one and a half to two hours in the afternoon. And then a lot of times they'll do a second training session in the evening. So it's just an observation that, and obviously like a lot of these professional runners, like, you know, the Ethiopians, Kenyans, like they're crushing it. They're just crushing, crushing the, uh, the races out there. So actually in Berlin, when this publishes, Berlin is 48 hours from now. So it's going to be fascinating to watch. Uh, to see what goes down in Berlin at the Berlin Marathon. And so of course the key word is sleep and the question of the day I already asked, let's, let's hear it down below, full transparency. And yes, of course, I'm just as guilty of staying up sometimes and using this too much before I fall asleep. The smartphone, I've heard 
there's a little bit of an epidemic out there, especially amongst, let's say, Generation Z, millennials, I don't know, like what, like us younger folks and probably, frankly, everyone at this point, where we gotta train ourselves to set the phone down. I've heard an hour before you try to fall asleep. I don't do that. I, I'm just being fully trained, like I don't do that, but again, Keeping in mind, us runners, as we try and chase down PRs, there's a lot of research out there that the more sleep we get, the better we, perf we will perform in our workouts, which means the better we will perform on race day. All right, speaking of that, we're gonna cut it there because I gotta go in and pack, and yes, edit this vlog, and yes, go to sleep. All right, I love you guys. Thank you for being here, thanks for watching, and I will see you in New Hampshire for the US Mountain Championships, which starts Sunday morning, uh, Sunday morning. So, all right, there you go. Here's a couple old vlogs on the right and the left. I'm just gonna grab some, well, I'll try and find a couple that hit on this topic as well that are relevant to today's discussion. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.